What is most infuriating thing people do to get attention? My best friend in college was a great dude to hang out with, but he always had to be the center of attention and the subject of compliments. He'd try to edge himself into every conversation whether it was relevant or not. When he ran out of stuff to say, he'd just start singing. He had a decent voice, and people would compliment him on his voice, which would make him happy. Then he'd run out of things to sing and just start making random noises. Asking half a question thus leaving you no choice but to ask for further clarification. My manager is the shining example of this. Manager, without looking up from her laptop not so neutral, could you hand me those? The me, those, manager, looks up angrily the scissors, me, of course, of course the scissors, what else could you have meant? Oh my gosh my mom does this, she'll text me something super vague and I have to ask 500 clarifying questions before she tells me that I need to pick up something from the store, it's like pulling teeth. I've also noticed lately I'm doing it too and it drives me nuts. People who exaggerate or make up injuries, illnesses, disorders, etc. They fundamentally undermine people who actually have serious issues and if we take it a step further, they are also the main contributors to antibiotic resistance and overmedication. They're also really freaking annoying and I don't understand how anyone could be a person like this. On Facebook, person 1, random passive aggressive comment. Person 2, everything okay, what's wrong? Person 1, nothing or I don't want to talk about it or message me. Jesus Christ, I mean, in my world you got one of two options. 1, let people know what's going on, or, 2, shut the frick up. Grief W, something bad happens to someone else, so they get extravagantly upset to bring the attention back to themselves. Grief thief is a great term for this. Post super dramatic social media updates that don't go into detail. I'm so upset and betrayed. Can't believe things ended up like this. Feels like my world is ending. And when someone says, what happened they go, message me, why? Vague booking is the term for this. Instagram. Don't you hate that Monday feeling or some random sentence about daily life? Picture is his her bare butt with pants pulled down. What? How is that relevant? It's not, divorce the comment from the picture, they don't need to act as a unit. These Instagram butt models know what they're doing. They're not pretending you're there to read about their thoughts on Monday, but it's kind of annoying and insane if every caption is look at my bum cheeks. People who post about their journeys when it's not really a journey but something normal and mundane. Usually that means they are going to be posting a lot about it. It's day 3 of my diet journey. It's like everyone else's diet, but with more significance. You guys, not many of you know, but I have been on this difficult healing journey since last month. Says person with a sprained ankle and about 3x more selfies and updates than normal, and literally everyone knows because there is no other option but to know. When I first started out on my spiritual journey, I had no idea how good pretentiousness and assumptions about other people felt. Now I boost my kundalini with GoFundMe campaigns. The raw exotic foods and intuitive aura readings are expensive, and it's self-loving of me to not have to work for things. Abundance. Please support my newest journey towards going to the spastic Starkildren and aesthetic festival where I can validate my hedonistic self-obsession and ignore the various levels of blatant hypocrisy and most of what I say and do insert link. Typing out this reply was an exhausting journey. So this one is pretty specific to one person, but it pisses me the frick off so I'm going to vent about it here. Every Sunday, without fail, at about 9am. This stupid freaking C opens his garage door, and starts his motorbike, then just revs it, for a minimum of 2 hours. He doesn't get on the freaking thing, he doesn't ride it, he's not working on it, he just freaking stands next to it freaking revving it. He does this for hours until the whole street, even inside our houses, absolutely reeks of petrol, it's disgusting. But yes, we get it, you have a freaking motorbike. Now please catch some kind of terminal illness you worthless freaking piece of crap. Time to call the cops for a noise disturbance. Hey guys I'm going to give this homeless guy $5 and then film it so I can make 100x that with all the views I get. I'm such a good person. Don't forget to like and subscribe.
I know a girl who constantly goes on social media. When she's feeling a little down, she's writing a freaking sob story. When she's feeling good she wants everyone to know how awesome her life is and how absolutely thankful and blessed she is. She is constantly fishing for compliments. Makes me want to puke. My co-worker will loudly mumble something to herself right as you're walking by her office. If you fall into her trap and ask if she was talking to you, or acknowledge that you heard her in any way, she'll launch into whatever conversation she wanted to ensnare you in. Example. Her. Mumble mumble so stupid. Me. Um, her, oh, I'm just looking at this new health insurance policy, and it's so stupid. It's like, why are you giving us the summary of benefits if you're not even going to include the full details of it, right? They're not showing any of the important stuff. Well crap. Cheryl, I was just on my way to take a pee, but now I gotta figure out whatever response is going to end this conversation the fastest posting on social media that they are praying for something someone. If you want to pray for the victims of a natural disaster, by all means I'm not trying to stop you, but posting on Facebook or Twitter that you're praying for someone is the equivalent of posting I'm a good person who cares about other people. Everyone look how good I am. But I think Jesus had a few things to say about loudly praying on the street corner. Spout deliberately inflammatory comments on the internet, in a format that's clearly not done with the intention of feeding into a proper discussion. They are loud for no reason. Keep your voice down. Why does everyone in the bar have to listen to what you have to say? Loud person here. I don't mean to. The more into a conversation I get the louder I get. I don't even notice I'm doing it. Comma I was partially deaf while I was learning to talk up until the age of around 6 and it's one of the side effects that never quite wore off. Peacocking. Apparently pickup artists will wear crazy looking things like a pink fuzzy scarf to get women to comment in it. This worked back before every poo started doing it thanks to Neil Strauss's outing of the pickup community and their tactics. Now it's so goddamn obvious and so goddamn lame. Facebook post that is of a sire clickbait. My sister does this all of the time and I am embarrassed for her. I can't believe it. After this, I need a glass of wine. She and her friends are idiots. Facebook status is targeted at someone but they don't say who. Example. How could you do this to me? I thought I could trust you. Facebook posts which are like. This is child X who is dying of cancer. Like this post for one prayer. Attention grabbing at its worst. My niece, 10, is an attention W. Everything she does is for some extra or prolonged attention. Ask her for something right in front of her face. She will play dumb so you are interacting with her just a bit longer. Your baby laughs randomly. OMG she's laughing at the noise I made. Look I just put this sock on this doll. Isn't that silly? Don't let her injure herself. Dear God. I blame her mother. The stand and stare. I understand that sometimes there isn't a good spot to jump in and get attention. But the longer you stand in the doorway you the worst out of my sight and stare at the back of my head, the worse it is. Just clear your throat. Tap my shoulder. Something. People who say they're so old now but in reality they're like in their early 20s. Like bruh your life has just begun. Our 20s are still our formative years. Just chill. Speak out loud into the ether in an attempt to lure people to respond to their remark. Like someone on the computer will say, Oh, that's cool out loud instead of looking to the person they want to talk to and saying, Hey, check this out. It's so minuscule but I see it constantly, and it drives me nuts. I've got a social anxiety disorder so talking to people is hard. I get it, but engage me if you want to talk. Don't set a trap like a social predator. People who post things like I'm thinking of doing a friend cull. Tell me why I should keep you on social media. If you can't think of a good reason to keep them as an online friend then remove them. People shpulled have to basically beg to be on your friends list. You either want them there or you don't. If you want people to compliment you then just freaking say so. I don't blame people for saying things like I'm feeling really crap about myself could people tell me something they like about me it's a little weird but at least it's honest. Post pointless bulls all over Facebook. My family is the worst for this. Constant pictures of glass of wine in hand. Or a meal they are about to eat. 
The amount of times I have typed no one gives a frick then deleted it to avoid drama is ridiculous. Interrupt whatever you're doing speaking about just so everyone can hear their comment which ends up usually being irrelevant or not funny at all. People who show surprise or excitement at everything, however minor, you hear about Whole Foods extending their closing time from 10pm to 11pm, shut up mouth agape. Trader Joe's has Toblerones for only $2 each. Get tattoos and then make everything in their lives about the tattoos. If you want to get a purple dragon spiraling around a mountain with a geisha fanning herself at the top that's fine. But don't just assume I wanna know all about it even though all I did was glance at it. Posting thirst trap, naked or scantily clad, pictures of themselves on social media to raise awareness about a cause such as cancer or football or something like that. But Teacher here, kids will, of course, do anything for attention. But most of the time it doesn't really get to me because I know they can't really help it, they're just being kids. The ones who do wear down my patience, though, are often the cutest and most charming little ones. They're the ones who will absolutely refuse to think for themselves because they'd rather have an adult do all their work for them. You can explain the information to them a hundred times, they'll obviously understand it, but refuse to actually process the information enough to, say, write it in a complete sentence or choose the keyword that they need to know, because it's fun for them to get you to tell them all the answers. I think it drives me nuts because, as someone with an overactive brain, I honestly can't figure out how a person can even just refuse to think. I wish I could, then maybe I could meditate for more than 60 seconds. A recent one, and really minor but, publicizing the dog you just adopted from the shelter. Every day on Reddit, this crap pops up. Fake people who use someone's death to get sympathy and attention. I see it every now and then on social media. Someone from school passes. A couple people post about how heartbroken they are and include a photo of them together from the single time they hung out 10 years ago. And of course, dozens of comments of, I'm so sorry for your loss. I find that disgusting and insulting for the family and friends who are truly close to the deceased. Same applies for celebrities. Their fan base triples when they die, usually people begging for attention. The saying everybody loves you when you're dead is accurate. Girls who post selfies with the camera pointing straight down their cleavage. Captioned look at my new haircut. No Brenda, it's your titties. You want us to look at your titties. We are all not that naive. Mostly these two things. A. People playing the devil's advocate on every single thing. B. People thinking they're discriminated for not liking clubs. I get it. You want to be different but shut up. People that self-diagnose especially on their bias or social media descriptions. I have depression, I have anxiety, I have I want attention syndrome. Sharing things on Facebook like let's see who my true friends are. Like and share this. Yada yada yada. Or sharing something about a sick kid. Or a veteran. And saying something about people who don't like and share are heartless. Stop looking for attention. And stop acting like you are special. Drama. There is a guy I knew in college and it seemed like every time you saw him again. There was another big huge issue. They always ended being some stupid minor thing he tried to blow up into a thing. One example was that he started talking about how a friend betrayed him and lied to him and all of that. What actually happened was that his friend had been working extra hours at his job and was just too tired to go out. Hurt themselves on purpose, mildly, then overreact about the pain. My new supervisor does this almost weekly and I really want to tell her to grow up and knock it the frick off. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.